What's up YouTube? This is Lucky with Automotive Life. Um, today we're going to be doing part two of the car flipping series. I apologize. I know it's been a long time since I put out another car flipping video, but uh, we've been moving into this new shop. Um, and basically this whole shop, I'll kind of give you a tour here in a little bit, is only for flipping cars and doing stuff on YouTube. So this way we can have something that's completely side that you can measure about. Um, we started off with five cars, we're up to about 30 right now in the last month since I haven't posted a video. So today we're gonna be going over recon. This is one of the most critical parts of uh, you making money is learning how to bid the cars, how to uh, do the repairs, what to look for and things like that. So I'm gonna show you a few tips and steps that I do to make sure that I don't go over budget and I stay and maintain a certain dollar amount on each vehicle. So let's go ahead and get into it. Like I said, today's video is mostly gonna be about regular vehicles that you can flip in your location no matter what part of the US you are. Um, I recommend starting out with very, very cheap cars, 500 to maybe $1,500 vehicles. Once you build your knowledge and you build your skill and you get a little bit better at it, then you can execute some more expensive stuff. I'm gonna show you some of the more expensive cars we flip for, uh, later on in the video. But today, it's really about the buckets, the cheap cars is what I call them. These are the things that, like I said, regular people can buy five, $600 and start flipping them. But these, uh, some of the things I'm gonna show you today is gonna to hopefully prevent you from doing some of the mistakes. So I keep all this in my head, but for today's sake, we're gonna visualize it. And I want you guys to do it too. I want you to write down on the vehicles what you bought the car for, what you think recon's gonna be, and what the vehicles are worth. So let's go ahead and start on the first one. So this one is a 2007 F-150 um, that I purchased for $1,500. You can see right here in the window, 1,500 bucks. I always write down the miles. Now this one is not too bad. This one's got a little bit of repair work, but not a whole lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and write some of the repair stuff on here. So. You know, this one doesn't need much. It needs a cam sensor, a few small things, maybe a new set of tires. So I'm saying probably around $600 worth of recon is what we're gonna need. And then usually what I tell everybody is add another 250 to $300 until you get really good where you know the costs are gonna be. So this way you play it safe. So let's add another 250. So we got the 1500, six, there's 21, 2350. So 2350. 2350 is what you should have in that vehicle. So now we have to make sure that if we put this much money into the vehicle, how much money are we gonna actually make? So on this part of the video, I'm gonna be showing clips on either my left or my right, depending on how it's filmed, um, is what, I, what they go for on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and OfferUp. Now, depending on your area, different people use different types of um, uh, mediums to sell their vehicles, but these are the three I use. So when you look it up, and you'll see them post probably around here, it's gonna show you an average price of about $5,500 for this vehicle. So I always wanna make mine the cheapest one possible because you wanna just get rid of it quick. A lot of people try to hold on and make the gross. The first deal is usually the right deal. You could always find another car. Um, so go ahead and like look up the research. So this one I saw the most of them were around $5,500 with 175,000 miles. So we're gonna post ours at five. With a selling price of $5,000, that leaves us a decent, uh, decent profit margin of about $26.50. So I put all this up first, so this way you can actually see and take the time and review these numbers. As you're working on the vehicle, things pop up, stuff like that, make sure you keep account of it because this is what's gonna help you keep on track to keep your money right. So now we know that we can make possibly $2,600 off this vehicle. If we have to go a few dollars more into recon, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. We have enough gap to keep us safe. Let's go ahead and get another vehicle. Here's the next vehicle. It is a 2003 GMC Yukon. This thing runs and drives great. It's just got a bunch of little cosmetic issues. This was another one I got from a payday loan store. Like I said, you can buy vehicles from just about anybody. So most of the vehicles I'm gonna be showing you actually come from different ones all together. So this one actually came from a uh, dealer that bought it, thought he was gonna fix it for cheap. His mechanic quit on him. He didn't know how to fix it, so we picked it off of him for cheap. This one, like I said, a payday loan store. But let's go ahead and get into this vehicle. So once again, you wanna write on the front of the vehicle, I paid $450 for this car, okay? Um, with the windshield, brakes, and this thing's gonna need two tires in the front. They're completely bald. Safety first. When you're doing the recon, make sure you do all the safety items first. You wanna make sure one, well, in Nevada, you have to have smog. So you make sure you pass his emissions 
and you want to make sure safety is taken first before you do any cosmetic stuff, do it this way. Work, work safety to smog emissions in your state or inspections, then to cosmetic stuff. So this way you don't lose your money because I've seen so many people throw a paint job on something, spend a bunch of money in interior, and then the car won't pass smog, you can't sell it. Nobody wants to buy it or they're gonna lowball the hell out of you. So make sure you do those things first. So um, safety item, we got the windshield, the brakes, stuff like that. We're gonna give this thing about $400 for recon. Okay, and then if we look on Facebook, Craigslist, Marketplace, and OfferUp, the average one of these is going between two grand and $3,300. Now, like I said, you always don't wanna be the most expensive. I try to be the cheapest, but on this particular vehicle, they're very popular. It's a third row seat and tax season's right around the corner. So certain vehicles you don't wanna give away, but you still wanna keep in mind that the first deal is the right deal. So I believe we're gonna probably do this one for about 2,500 bucks. So let's put $2,500 is our goal. So right now we're into the car 850. So as you can see, we have a decent margin ahead of us. We're able to save quite a bit of money if we do the repairs right. And that leaves us enough, more than enough space to make a few dollars. You know, as you're going through, if you have a big gap, like right here, you see the bumpers torn. If you have extra money, you could go ahead and repair those types of things. You know, look through it, you know, make sure that everything is good. I see, you know, like I said, the front bumper needs to be painted. We got a dent right here on this panel. If you write this stuff down and you visualize it, it really does help you because I've watched so many people just keep dumping money into cars and they lose it. There's a really good example. I'm gonna show you one inside the shop here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and move on to the next car. Okay, I'm getting ready to show you a car that we literally bought for 75 bucks. Now it's not the greatest car, it's not the most amazing car, but if you're getting started out, these are the kind of cars you wanna buy. So this one we actually bought from a dealer. The dealer basically tried to sell it to the junkyard. The junkyard never came and picked it up. They said they didn't wanna give him any money for it and a bunch of other stuff. He's been trying to fix it on his lot, but it's not worth it for him. But somebody like a flipper, if you're doing it in your garage or doing it in your house, you know, you could spend the time to make one of these ugly cars pretty. And this is a 2001 Saturn SL2. Now, like I said, this car is definitely not fancy. It is not the nicest car in the world, but all that matters is it's mechanically sound and it can make you a few dollars. So let's go ahead and start the, start the paperwork. So this car, believe it or not, only has 98,000 miles. So we're gonna put 98,000 miles. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and put what we paid for it, a whopping $75. Now, on some of these vehicles, you need to make sure that you throw in a few extra dollars for your time, gas, stuff like that, because if you wanna start getting really, really efficient, you need to make sure that you put all that in there. So like this particular vehicle, um, we got it, the ignition was a little messed up, so we actually had to use the tow truck to tow it back. So I'm gonna add $25 to make sure it covers my time and my gas. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a slash through the 75. We're gonna put $100. So this way, at least we know we got a little bit of money in there for uh, the gas and the mileage on the tow truck. Now this one, not really that bad. It runs and drives fine, just needs a tune up. I'm gonna give it about $250 worth of uh, parts and repair and labor. And so I'd like to sell this one for probably right around 1200 bucks. It's not super expensive but it's a good solid transportation vehicle and that's what the people want. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be amazing. You just wanna make sure mechanically it's sound, everything works and go through it. So I looked online, the cheapest one I saw was about $1,000, the most expensive one I saw was 15. So if somebody comes and says, hey, I got $1,000 lucky, I wanna take this car, I'm gonna let them have it. Because like I said, this is not the world's greatest car, but and I know at the same point, a $1,000 car that runs and drives has AC in Las Vegas, because it does get 118 degrees out here in the summer and a past the smog is a huge thing. And all the top cars that I'm showing you are all clean titles. So let's go ahead and let's put 1200 bucks. All right. So now we know that with this particular vehicle, even with something as simple as $100, you could if not double, triple some of your money. Now, these ones are not very, they don't come around that often. There are a few cars that I buy for really cheap, but there are a few cars, which I'm gonna show you, that I overpaid for. Now. Part of the reason why I overpay for them sometimes is because I have to buy a package deal. So sometimes some of the vehicles, I have to buy three or four at a time. And I'm gonna show you a few of those on why I took a bath on a few, but I'm gonna make money on other ones. So let's get in the next car. Okay, I'm not gonna go too much over these next three vehicles because like I said, these are one of the ones that I bought as a package deal. I bought this uh, blue Dodge Ram. 
Um, my goal was basically they made me pay $500 across the board. Now the Dodge Ram was a mystery. There was no key. I started it up. It has a rod knock. Unfortunately, I'm going to lose my money. This one right here, this Ford Escape, same thing, 500 bucks. But the great thing is this thing runs and drives no problem. No, I didn't. I got it with no keys. I just have to replace the oil pan. These ones go for about $2,500 online. So I'll make my money up on that one. And then the minivan right here, they told me the motor was bad. It was locked up. Um, my guy just went and started tinkering with it. $75 starter. So we're going to have this thing probably running by the end of today. And I'll probably sell it for about $1,500, maybe $1,800. So just from these two units, I've made my money. This particular one, I'm probably going to put on Craigslist or Facebook as a uh, mechanic special. Like I said, you're not going to be able to fix every single car. So it's okay. You're going to lose on some of these vehicles. You know, don't beat yourself too much up on it. Try to limit your risks with gaining the knowledge from, like I said, learning how to do recon correctly, lowering your costs, getting bid from vendors. So some of the other cars I'm going to show you right now are going to involve paint work, machine work, and stuff like that. And I'm going to show you what I pay, how much we try to bid for it. So this way we can get you a little bit better numbers. So if you're not as experienced in the automotive realm, you can feel a little bit more comfortable starting on your journey as car flipping. Okay, the next car we got going on right here is a Kia Sorento. It's a 2005. I picture, or excuse me, I purchased this one from a pawn shop. So, like I said, you try to buy your cars from as many, you know, vendors as you possibly can because everybody thinks you have to have a dealer's license to go to certain auctions. There's public auctions in some states, payday loan stores, pawn shops, stuff like that. Um, you can go bid on particular vehicles, but I always recommend getting your dealer's license because if you want to take this seriously, get your dealer's license. If you can't afford it, remember, you can always get your broker's license. Um, watch my video on how to get your dealer's license. Getting your broker's license is the exact same thing. You just don't have to have a actual physical large dealership. You can rent a very small virtual office for like $100 a month and you can get your license there if you want to buy cars and then sell them on your friends' lot. But like I said, flipping cars, you want to do a little bit get your big basis but also build up to where you're going to be a dealer so this particular vehicle i purchased for 250 dollars now this one i believe is a scream deal it's not that pretty it's going to need the grill tires are okay sorry i'm kind of wiggling around with the camera the interior if you can look is not that great it's a little dirty but tax season is around the corner and this is when any car that runs and drives is worth about $2,500. It's going to go nuts. Every tax season it's like this. So if you could start buying right now in January, right around the middle of February, that big tax hit should hit and you'll see any car that runs and drives for two grand is gone. So once again, $250 for the vehicle. Now this particular one has a bad head gasket. Now I'm going to show you a few breakdowns. I usually put the recon in one number, but I'm going to show you a few different ones. So. If you start this journey, before you need a machine shop, go visit other machine shops, mechanics, ask them what, they're, you know, what they pay to get a machine or a head machined. So this particular vehicle, the valves are not bent, it just blew a head gasket. This is an interference motor. If you, know, if you don't know what that means, basically when the timing belt goes, the valves basically still stick out and then if it jumps time or anything, you're gonna bend your valves. So this particular vehicle, like I said, only blew the head gasket. So my machine shop charges me $30 each head to clean them, pressure test them, and to plane them. And plane it means to shave them down to a flat surface to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Now, that's what I pay. I've seen some machine shops in Texas charge $10, and I've seen some machine shops here in Vegas charge $300 a head. So go ahead, take your time, and like I said, visit with a few mechanics, visit with a few machine shops, a few dealers, ask them where they get their done, the quality work, because remember, even if it, the guy is the cheapest one, if you have a lot of problems with them, this is stuff you don't want to mess with. You don't want to have to put a head on there and not know that it's done quality and then you have to rip it all apart. You got to get new gaskets and everything else. And the gasket kit for this car is $200. So everything is pretty inexpensive. So the labor we're going to do most of us, uh, most of most part by us. But if for some reason I have to send it out, you're probably going to spend an average of about $200 to $300. So let's say $200 to $300 for labor to take off a head gasket, or both heads, V6. Um, you're gonna spend about 60 bucks getting the heads machined. You're also gonna spend um, another $225 for the gasket kit uh, and another $125 for the timing belt water pump and stuff like that. Now on certain vehicles, you do wanna spend that little extra money to make sure that you could sell it. Like, hey look, this car has been serviced, it's got a timing belt, you can add certain dollar amounts for those things and I'm gonna show you here in a minute. 
These ones right here are on average going on Facebook, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace between $1,800 and $2,600. Now, on this particular one, we're going to try to go for around $25. The reason is, is like I said, we're going to go ahead, we're going to fix the grill, do a windshield, we're going to be doing the water pump, timing belt, and head gaskets. And this car's only got 118,000 miles. They actually put that on there. So you want to make sure that now that we have all this together, we have something that we could sell to somebody and always take pictures. Take pictures, keep them in the car with you. So this way when you're selling the car, print it all the way out. And people actually, they do, they feel a little more comfortable. Hey, look, I, I did the head gaskets on this vehicle. I did the timing belt. You folks are gonna have no problems. And if you buy from certain vendors, um, which one of the things I'm gonna tell you here in a little bit is make sure if you wanna get started in car flipping, go get a license to be a mobile mechanic. Doesn't cost, cost that much money, but you'll be able to get a, uh, um, accounts at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Napa, CarQuest, whatever you guys have in your area. I know they're all the same companies, but they have different names. So once you get those things on there, all the parts you get actually come with warranty. So let's say you, I put a head gasket in this one, and then a month down the road, the head gasket blows. You could actually do a warranty claim through uh, O'Reilly's, or which is Shucks, I think, in, in most parts of the other U.S. You can actually put a claim in, and they will pay you uh, 50 bucks an hour to fix your own vehicle and they will give you new parts. So these are, these are some of the little things we'll go over probably in a later video, but start now. It doesn't cost that much money and you can get started pretty quickly. Okay, this vehicle right here is a 2009 Buick Enclave. These things are great. I try to get as many third row SUVs as I possibly can for tax season. This car is clean, runs and drives. We got a little bit of body damage back here in the corner. Let me show you. So you can see that right there. Usually we'll make a mark and we will let the uh, body shop guys know, hey, how much will you charge to do this type of repair work? You always want to have a bid so this way if you know how much it's going to cost. And like I said, if you do have a little bit of fluff in the vehicle, you could actually make some really good money by fixing it and then making it that much nicer to get the buyers. So we do everything in-house here. I'm going to show you the shop there. So we have mechanical, paint and body, upholstery, everybody's here. So, but. If you don't have that, don't be afraid to get bids from multiple vendors. Also, it's a great time to learn how to do paint and body. So if you don't know how to do it, watch some YouTube videos just like you're watching this one. You could start on some of these buckets. Worst case scenario, you make it a little bit ugly, but it's better than what it was before. So this vehicle right here, I purchased for uh, $1,800, but I purchased this from Arizona. So I paid $200 in shipping. So right now as it sits, we're $2,000 into the vehicle. Um, this car has 110,000 miles. Now this particular cars, these have a lot of problems with the timing chain. Now there's these things called cam phasers that sit on top of the heads. Most cams, it's just a solid chain with a solid sprocket, no big deal. But these ones, they have a lot of phaser problems. It's a fluid adjusted control that um, basically helps your timing, helps with gas efficiency and things like that. Now, when these go bad, it's a big pain in the ass because you got to drop the motor, tear the whole side of it off, and then replace everything. So this particular car, the timing kit, you got to get from Chevy. Do not get it aftermarket. I'm, I'm telling you right now, when you put it in there, you're going to have a cylinder misfire that's never going to go away. You're going to spend thousands of dollars on coil packs and everything else. So this car right here, we got from a, uh, another shop in Arizona. They bought it and I think they paid like five grand for this thing. And they put coil packs, they put injectors, they did the uh, head gaskets, they did a bunch of stuff. But they must have never run into this. And this is one of the few small things as you start doing this, you start learning about each individual car. So these guys spent a lot of money making this thing nice, but they didn't know about the cam phasers. It won't tell you that, you'll look it up online, it'll be very hard to see, but that's pretty much the problem with all these 3.6 uh, GM motors. So. The kit you have to get from Chevy, it's about $600. And it's another uh, $500 in labor. So we're looking at about 1100 bucks just to get this thing running perfectly and get it past smog. We're looking at another $600 for painting the whole side of the vehicle. So let's go ahead and let's add all this stuff up. We got two grand, 1100. So there's 31, 37. So by the time we're done, we're into the vehicle 3700. Now. As we look on Facebook, Craigslist, OfferUp, Marketplace, uh, Let It Go, several apps, whatever you guys use, you're going to see that these vehicles range anywhere between 7000 
and ten thousand dollars now mo mostly i like i said sell it for cheap be the first one but on these third row suvs during tax season these things are gold because right around the third week of when people have their tax money there's none of them left and if there are there they go for all the money so since this one's a much nicer vehicle and this thing's got leather navigation it's got the two sunroofs it's a really really sharp car so we're going to ask a little bit more money we're going to ask for eight thousand dollars you know we'll probably post it for about 85 just so we can get you know people will come down there and lowball us and you're going to get lowballers it's okay don't get upset i i got cars posted right now for five thousand dollars no will you take two no thank you um i need this amount of money and then reply back don't cuss anybody out because you'll see, you'll have other flippers buying cars off of you and then reselling them. And also that guy may be down the road, may buy another car from you. So always be friendly to the other people. So this is this one. We're gonna go to the next vehicle, which this one's a little bit more expensive. Um, as we're walking along, we're like I said, the vehicles are gonna go up and up. So this particular vehicle, I got from a title loan company. The guy borrowed, I think it was $10,000 on this truck. It is a 2010. Ford F-150. It's actually in really good shape. It's pretty clean. It does have high miles though. It has about 168,000 miles. But here in Vegas, any truck that's a 4x4, somewhat lifted, and it's that beautiful electric blue color, you're going to pay more. So this vehicle, I actually paid a lot. I paid $5,000. So I paid five grand for it. But also, when I got this vehicle, I got it with no keys and no battery. I had to buy it as is. So I got it here, runs and drives great. I was driving around the parking lot, thought I scored a huge home run. I go to put it in reverse, <laughs> no reverse. So unfortunately, this particular vehicle, I'm gonna have to go out and do a transmission rebuild. Now, this car, the transmissions on them are super expensive. I called LKQ BNR, which are two of the biggest wrecking yards here in Vegas and they want almost $1,700 for used transmission, which is ridiculous. So I called one of my friends that does transmissions. I asked him how much to rebuild it and then also repair. A lot of people don't know, you could rebuild the transmission, which is always a safer bet. If you're selling it to a friend, family member, or if you're keeping it yourself, you always wanna rebuild it. It's worth a few extra dollars. But on this particular vehicle, um, he's gonna charge me $500 to pull it out and rebuild the two, uh, clutch discs that are bad on the reverse and replace a shift solenoid. So like I said, 550 bucks. So we're gonna put uh, 500 for the tranny. And then also we're gonna spend probably about, about another $500 going through it, you know, making sure the brakes are good, oil change, service, uh, change all the belts. Cause this particular vehicle actually is really expensive. So we're gonna go through it and make sure that it's top notch because the people that are gonna buy it are really gonna scrutinize it. So. Let's add another, just for fun, let's add $600. <clears throat> so all together, we're at $6,100. And then, like I said, this thing's got 168,000 miles. Now here's the crazy part. In Vegas, trucks are so damn overpriced, it's ridiculous. I don't know why. You could literally fly to Texas, fly to California, fly to anywhere and they are much, much cheaper. So some of the prices I'm gonna tell you, you guys are gonna be shocked and like, you could never sell it for that. But here in Vegas, unfortunately, we're out in like a little little uh, pin in the middle of the desert. There's nothing else around here. You know, all these other cities, like in California, Texas, you got city by city by city, and you got a flow of vehicles coming in and out, where here, you don't get that. So I looked online, the average vehicle is between 9,000 and $12,000. So we're not gonna be the most cheap on this one. We're not gonna be the most expensive, but we're gonna be on a little bit of the lower end. So I'm gonna to try to sell this thing between 95 and 10 grand. There we go. So like I said, we got our $5,000 into the vehicle. We have our $500 for the transmission, $600 for other recon. And like I said, we could get into this. This could go up, this could go down. That's why we're doing this write down. $6,100 is our average estimate, looking at about 95 to 10K to sell the vehicle. So we're looking at a profit, about 3,000 bucks, give or take a few, few hundred dollars. But this is, like I said, it's not that hard. You can do this in your shop with minor tools and it's really not that bad. I wouldn't start out with anything like this. I would try to go for mostly, I tell everybody, stay with what you know. 
you know, if you like Hondas, do Hondas. If you like Fords, try to do Fords. If you know certain things like on this Buick, if once you learn a few tricks, you'll know how to buy these cars and how to fix them for a very inexpensive price. So once you find kind of your favorites, you start buying the cars that line up to that ideology. And once you get all those vehicles, like I said, you'll start very small, but I promise you, um, a lot of the people that actually have commented and emailed me personally, some of these guys started with only one car when I first put out this video two months ago, and now they're upwards of 10 vehicles. So there are some pretty cool uh, things. I may fly to a few cities just to kind of interview people and uh, have them talk about how they started flipping cars, what they did and everything else. Because I think it's interesting because a lot of people want to share information on YouTube, but they don't really give you a lot of facts and they don't give you a lot of numbers. And I believe that's some of the stuff that we're going to need as business owners or as car flippers to be more successful because everybody's like, yeah, I bought my car for 500 bucks and I sold it for 10,000 and I made a million dollars. And you're like, great, show me how. And they never will because most of it is pretty much bullshit. And the other half is basically it's, it's a bunch of rich kids working at their dad's shops, not really doing anything. So this is something I wanted to show you the cheap cars so you guys can see that, like I said, if you don't have a lot of money, you could afford to do something like this. Once you get bigger and you get a shop and then you get a tow truck and you get all this other stuff, then you can expand a little bit more. But most of the stuff, believe it or not, I did this in high school. I used to go to the auction impound yards. Um, every tow yard publicly has to announce that they have to impound cars or when they impound cars, they have an auction date. I used to go to those when I was, like I said, 16, 17 years old. And we would just go there and bid on every piece of crap. We'd drag it home. My mom and dad would freak out when they'd see these cars in the yard and told me I was an idiot. But some of these cars, we would just barely would clean up, get them started, change the oil, and we made a few hundred dollars on it. And from that moment on, I was hooked. So now, you know, I've been doing uh, cars for probably about, God, I think it's almost 15, 15 years. And I'm usually the youngest guy in most of my dealer groups that I know. Everybody else is in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and everything else. But like I said, you can still be very successful with minimal amount of money and a little bit of patience and a little bit of knowledge. And hopefully through these videos, you can gain some of that. So like I said, today I wanted to do like a little bit of a nicer video to kind of uh, show you more stuff, but I'll be honest with you. If I do this and I set it up and I, I get a camera guy and have him follow me around, I never do it. So I'm trying to do more hands-on to get more videos out to you because I got probably about 110 emails of people asking me, when's the next video come out? When are you gonna do recon? I need to know more about recon. How do you price out your cars? How do you price out repairs? Stuff like that. So without me waddling too much, I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna show you a few of the cars we have inside as well, as well as some of the expensive cars that we're flipping, just to kind of give you an idea, but I don't wanna go over it too much. I'll see you inside. So I just got into one of the bays. This is our prep area, but we do paint and body kind of show you around. But this is the best way to show you guys how different you can make your business when you start flipping cars. So if you look to my left here, you'll see a car, it's it's not that fancy, but it's a good solid work truck. It's a Chevy uh, Silverado 1500. Um, it's getting a complete paint job. A lot of these cars run and drive great, but the sun out here bakes them in Vegas. Just from doing a quick single stage paint job, you can get a uh, thousand to maybe several thousands of dollars more in certain vehicles. So, and like I said, we have one extreme where we have an affordable uh, truck under like 5,000 bucks. Then we go to the other extreme. This is a 2018 Aston Martin. So no matter how you start in your journey, you can go either way. You can go with affordable trucks, or affordable cars, or you can buy uh, wrecked exotics. You can do either one, but start with something simple. Like I said, start off with a few cheap cars, get going, build your relationship with vendors because I was fortunate enough to learn long ago that you can't do it all yourself. You could try, but you wanna be experienced enough where you know the bids and you wanna try it yourself. But once you realize what you're good at, stop. Once you learn that, find other vendors that compliment you. When I had my first shop, you know, I was 18 years old. I didn't have a whole lot of money. Um, I was renting this shop downtown Vegas. I was paying about three grand a month back then. And it was really, really tough. So I subleased it out to a transmission guy one of my bays and another guy was an upholstery guy. And just from them being part of my uh, shop, it actually saved me a lot of money and we fed off each other's work. So if you wanna start and you wanna get a shop or you do have a shop and you're trying to figure it out, work with other vendors. Put ads on, on Craigslist, Facebook. Hey, look, I'm a small and upcoming business. I'd like to find similar minded people so this way we can grow together because everybody that you're gonna see working with me, 
They're not employees. They're all business owners. Everybody owns their own business. Like I said, when it comes to paint and body, we have two guys here, which you'll be, meet eventually. They're kind of afraid to be on camera, but uh, eventually I know they're probably going to come out. But we work together so this way that, like I said, it's tough enough as is to survive. At least if you get other people to help you and things to do, uh, excuse me, other people to help you and, uh, um, and you don't have to pay that big overhead and you can work with each other. And like I said, his customers come in for repair work and my customers come in for his repair work. So it balances out really, really well. All right, walking out of the shop now, just talking to a few of the guys, going over stuff there. Nobody wants to be on video, but we'll get them later. So here's the outside of the shop. You can see all the different types of cars that we have right now. Like I said, we have some expensive, some not so expensive. We're gonna walk over here and I try to buy quite a bit of salvage vehicles when it comes to certain flips because people actually like the more, I guess, newer cars, the low miles, but they're cheaper. So this one right here, um, I have videos. I'll try to show you some clips of this 4Runner. We bought it with the front end missing. It's a 2016. It's only got like 20,000 miles. We paid, I think it was like 8,500 bucks. And then with another maybe 3,000 bucks in parts, it's good to go. So um, these are retailing for anywhere between 25 and 28,000. We're gonna probably sell this one for like 18,000. So you can make a quick seven grand, eight grand after all the fees and everything else to buy something like this. We do have a few banks that do finance salvage vehicles. So you wanna check in your area if you do can get those, or if you can get a, a bank that uh, finances salvage cars, you'll make a lot of money. And I recommend IAA more than Copart because IAA, um, they're, they're actually, I think a little bit bigger than Copart, but the vehicles are a lot better. The, the reps are actually online so you can actually meet them or i mean excuse me at the auction so when you're buying a car like i bought this one this tacoma and that chevy silverado all within like four cars the rep saw me do that and you know i had to pay all the money for the this forerunner but on this older tacoma and this chevy he gave me a much much better deal because he saw me purchasing these vehicles so at least you can have a chance to build a rapport with that uh, insurance rep, so this way he sees you purchasing vehicles, he'll give you a deal every now and then. This one, we paid five grand for it. It's a 2013 Toyota Tacoma. It's two wheel drive, but we spent about another $1,500 in parts and paint. This one, we're probably gonna sell, I don't know, about maybe $12,000, $13,000. The Chevy, we paid 10 grand for it. It's got, uh, I think, a little over 40 something thousand miles, 49,000 miles. Time. Looks good. So this whole car was screwed up in the front end. And look at that. Everything's lined up. New core support. The wreck cars are really not that bad to fix up. Sorry if my voice fades in and out. I'm turning the microphone on. But these cars are really not that bad to fix up. But you got to have somebody like Angel that does really, really good work, that takes the time to not only uh, do the repairs right, but he could fix a lot of the parts that we don't have to buy. And that saves you thousands of dollars at the end of the month. So when I gave my hand or a chance at body work, I sucked. Um, I did fiberglass back then. I, I was doing a lot of uh, uh, Corvettes and some of the exotic cars. And I like fiberglass, but I don't know why. I cannot do Bondo. It takes me six hours to sand Bondo. And every time I do it, it just looks worse and worse and worse. So mad props to Angel for getting that done. Um, the other guy, Gary, he's not here, um, but he does amazing work as well. He brought his family over from the Midwest just for an opportunity out here in Vegas. You'll eventually meet him through some of the videos as well, but he does great work. Um, a few of the other guys, um, Raul and uh, Mario, you'll meet them later on. So pretty much mostly what I try to do is one, I, I, I usually tow the cars because I've already had everybody use the tow truck and they wind up ripping off the front ends of the vehicles. Um, diagnosis, um, that's kind of what I do. I go through the vehicles and actually find out what's wrong. So some of these cars, you know, like it seems very mild, but it's really not. You got to dig into it a little bit. Um, and then also, you know, minor mechanical repair. But I always tell people, you want to make sure you keep your hands dirty. You keep doing repairs, whether they're minor, major. Every once in a while, I'll swap a motor just to bring the frustration back. Because I think it puts you in a good mindset. Because when you're bidding on cars, you're remembering all that pain and agony of busting your knuckles and doing these crappy-ass jobs for very, very minimal money. But 
When I first started, you had to do everything because I couldn't afford to sub out a few things. Everything I did myself, and like I said, I did have some really steep learning curves. I did screw up a handful of cars, which is okay. You're gonna do that. But I think it's the best way to get started. It's really not that hard. Like I said, um, I wanna try to put out as much content as I can to help you guys out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you look at most of my videos, I try to take the time uh, to answer every single one. I am coming out with a few videos that you guys can purchase um, that's gonna go more in depth. I'm actually gonna have a, a, camera, uh, excuse me, a camera crew film those. It's about 2,800 bucks is what they're gonna charge me, so that's the only reason why I'm charging uh, a little bit more money um, on those videos because, like I said, I have to recoup that cost. But these ones will be more in detail with going to the auction, buying cars, like I said, getting your dealer's license, floor plans, um, getting your body shop license, your mechanic license, things like that. Like I said, start off, get your, uh, you know, if you wanna get a broker's license, get that. Go uh, to your city, get a mobile mechanics license, that's very inexpensive, get your AIA number, get your bank account set up, and then go get your vendors signed up, and you'll be ready to go. So once again, leave the comments down below if you have any questions, and we'll see you next video.